All right, so today I'm going to show you how to create a distressed picture in um, using paint.net. So essentially taking a picture and adding those sorts of markings on it that make it look like it's sort of been torn up. So, so first you start with a picture. I'm going to do one I've got saved here. And I'm going to open that in paint.net. So there we are for starters. We'll start with the good old American flag. Um, now the next thing I want to do is then add a layer on top of this that is the uh, another picture that has the markings and stuff that will help create the distressed look. So we'll go over here to layers, right up here, uh, and then we're going to import from file. Um, this will allow us to select the picture we want that has the various markings that we like. So I always find that pictures of rust are helpful. So. Um, I actually have several pictures of rust, and in this case, I'm going to select the one that I think will give me dis distressings on the right-hand edge. So that's probably that's going to be this one because it's darker over here. So select that one, and now it has been layered on top of the picture that I started with. I'm going to stretch it out to cover the entire picture, and you can stretch it past the original picture if you want. Um, just make sure that everything that you're going to want to have distressed markings is covered up by this layer. So I'm stretch the bottom, stretch the side, and here we are. Now the next step is going to be to um, go over here to adjustments and what this is going to do is make some adjustments to that layer that you just added. So we're going to change that top layer with the rest to all black and white. So poof, now it's grayscale, which is great. The next thing is we're going to add an additional adjustment, this time to brightness and contrast. Right, so first it starts out kind of in the middle with is basically no adjustment. Um, the first thing you'll do is take contrast and blow it out all the way to the right. What this does, it makes every color in this layer is now completely black or completely white. So from there, you can go over to brightness and you can adjust. The, the more brightness you add, the less of the black there will be. Um, the more, the less brightness you add, if you take away brightness essentially, the more of the black there will be. So I actually want the distressing to be sort of not as much, because not, not too much. Yeah, that looks about right. So I just make adjustments so it looks about how you want it to look. And then hit OK. The next step is then to make, uh, select your magic wand tool which looks like an actual magic wand. And then um, you're going to want to select either the black or the white, whichever part of the picture you want to disappear. So in this case, I'm going to be selecting the black. Before I do that, though, you'll notice up here that it says flood mode. There's contiguous and then there's global. Contiguous simply means that if I select the black section here on the right hand side, it's going to select everything, every bit of black of that same color that is touching, essentially, um, what was selected. So all of this was selected because it's all touching in some way. However, you'll notice this area over here on the top left-hand corner is not touching, and so it was not selected. So I generally don't use this um, that for this particular purpose. I generally will select the global mode, um, and you don't actually have to use this drop down. You can just toggle back and forth right here just by clicking on that. So I like to select global and then I'm going to click it again. And this time it's going to go through and select every piece of black on this entire layer. And as soon as that's done, this takes some processing. So this might take a second for it to do. Okay, now notice this over here was selected on the top left hand corner. And over here on the right hand side, that was all selected as well. Cool. Now this is cool. Uh, and at this point, you may be tempted to just hit delete because that's normally how we would use the magic wand um, tool, but don't do that. Um, there's a couple more things we have to do before you get a chance to hit the delete key. So first, go up back up to your layers menu, right? And then hit delete layer. So this is going to delete out the rust, the black and white rust picture that we added. Now it's going to take it out. So we're going to delete that layer. And this may take a minute because there's some processing that's required. Now, what you'll see is that the rust layer picture has been has disappeared, but everything that was selected on that rust picture is still selected on your underlying picture, right? And while it's still selected, now you can hit the delete key 
and it will all go away taking that chunk of your picture with it. So I just hit the delete key. It, this again takes some processing, so it may take a minute depending on how fast your computer is, and poof, there you go. All of that is gone. The black and white or the gray and white checkerboard here simply means that whatever you put this on will show through there. So there we go. Now I'll go ahead and hit save as. If you hit save, it will replace the original picture with this one, which is not what I don't want to do, so I'm not going to do that. Um, so I'm just going to hit save as and just call this US flag distressed like that. And I, also you're going to want to make sure that when you save it, you save it as a PNG file. If you save it as a JPEG or something else, then it's going to basically add all a white background everywhere where you just took stuff away, which is generally not what you want. So save it as a PNG. Poof, there it is. And then this is going to ask you what sort of resolution you want. I always choose 32 because I always like to have the highest possible resolution. Hit OK. And there you go. We can get rid of that. And then I will show you actually what this looks like in context. Um, let's just let me give you an idea. I'm going to open up a publisher document and then bring that picture into, uh, into the document. So here's this. And then my distressed photo is right here. I'm just going to drag it in right there. There we go, and there it is. And what, I'll go ahead and copy this on a couple of other slides of various colors so you can see the effect that, that it has. It's much more dramatic on a black background. Um, and I like to use this in like t-shirt design, so essentially this would be printed and then the t-shirt color is what would shine through, which is kind of cool. So I probably wouldn't select a red t-shirt for this particular design because I don't think this looks that great. But anyway, so that is how that would work.